Welcome back to All About Winning Daily Fantasy Sports. My name is Ty Patton. Hopefully up to this point, you have followed my individual position videos where I created a player pool of players that I will be targeting in week 14 for my DFS main slate lineups. This is my favorite video of the week where I finally put my research together to build winning lineups. I will also share a lineup or two created by an optimizer that I use, but before we unpack week 14, let's recap the week 14 player pool with some ownership numbers as well. This is something uh, new this week. Um, sometimes I give you a few of the ownership. Um, from a, This is from a site that I use, um, and um, these are projected ownerships right now. These are the quarterbacks in my player pool. Lamar Jackson, 12% ownership. Patrick Mahomes, 6% ownership. Matt Ryan, 10% ownership. Jameis Winston, 8% ownership. Tom Brady, 6% ownership, Jacoby Brissett, 4% ownership, and Kyle Allen, less than 1% ownership. These are the running backs that I'll be targeting in week 14. Christian McCaffrey, right now he's got um, fairly low ownership, 11%. Um, Fournette, 11%. I had Le'Veon Bell, he was up to 16% ownership. He has been ruled out. Aaron Jones, 10% ownership. Josh Jacobs, 9% ownership. Josh is still questionable for tomorrow. Sony Michelle, 4% ownership. Devontae Freeman, 12% ownership. Madison from uh, Minnesota, 3% ownership. And I've added Bilal Powell from the Jets, and um, he's 3,500, and I don't have any projected ownership on him right now. Wide receivers, Michael Thomas from New Orleans, 12% ownership. Tyreek Hill from Kansas City, 3% ownership. Devontae Adams from Green Bay, 9% ownership. Chris Godwin from Tampa Bay, 10% ownership. Mike Evans from Tampa Bay, 18% ownership. Julian Edelman from uh, New England, 11% ownership. DJ Moore from Carolina, 12% ownership. Calvin Ridley from Atlanta, 10% ownership. Odell Beckham Jr. from Cleveland, 12% ownership. Um, Crowder from the Jets, 14% ownership. Anderson from the Jets, 4% ownership. Fuller from Houston, 9% ownership. And remember, he has um, uh, a questionable tag as well. Tyler Boyd from Cincinnati, 7% ownership. And Emmanuel Sanders from uh, San Francisco, 4% ownership. These are the tight ends that I'm going to be targeting. Travis Kelsey, Kansas City, 15% ownership. Um, Hooper from Atlanta, 9% 9, 9 ownership. Waller from Oakland, 12% ownership. Um, Jack Doyle, 10% ownership. Hunter Henry from uh, the Chargers, 11% ownership. McDonald from Pittsburgh, 4% ownership. Cooks from New, New Orleans, 3% ownership. Jimmy Graham from Green Bay, 1% ownership. And Joku, uh, who's been activated for Cleveland, less than 1% ownership right now. I think that'll definitely be going up. Janu Smith from Tennessee, 2% ownership. Um, ben Watson from New England had 0% ownership. And Tyler Eifert from Cincinnati, 1% ownership. The defense special teams that I'm targeting, um, the Green Bay Packers, 6% ownership. Minnesota Vikings, 9% ownership. Houston Texans, 7% ownership. And the Arizona Cardinals, 3% ownership. Before I build some lineups, I want to do a game-by-game -game breakdown. But first, let's look at some injuries um, that we need to keep an eye on for the main slate games. And always, always, I'll remind you at the end of this video, always check that uh, injury report at 1130 for the 1 o'clock games, and then check it again at 2.45, 3 o'clock for the 4, 4.20 games. Um, always check that even if they don't have a uh, questionable or uh, probable designation, something happens during warm-up, you always want to know. You don't want to start your um, contest out with a zero in a position because the player's not playing. But real quickly, these are some uh, uh, players that have um, injury designations right now. These are only the fantasy-relevant players, meaning the only ones that can score fantasy points. Obviously, some defensive injuries can affect your um, the matchups that you have on um, offense, but I'm going to give you the uh, 
the main injuries right now to keep an eye on. Baltimore wide receiver uh, Marquise Brown and Seth Roberts are both questionable, but both were full participants in um, practice on Friday. Buffalo, um, no injuries reported. Washington, wide receiver uh, Richardson and wide receiver Quinn are ruled out. Green Bay, no injuries reported. Denver, no injury reported. Houston, running back Jones, Taiwan Jones is out. Wide receiver Fuller is questionable. Uh, he practiced all week in a limited fashion. He's drawn some attention in the last few days because the previous weeks he was practicing more. I don't know if this is more of a maintenance thing, but if you're going to use him, uh, make sure you check that injury report tomorrow. 49, 49ers, wide receiver Pettis and wide receiver Godwin are questionable. New Orleans, no fantasy players reported. Cincinnati, wide receiver A.J. Green ruled out. Cleveland, tight end Harris is questionable. Njoku, the tight end, is activated and will be playing with no limitations. Carolina, tight end uh, Greg Olson is ruled out. Atlanta, wide receiver Julio Jones and tight end Austin Hooper are expected to play. Detroit, obviously Matt Stafford's ruled out. David Blow, the rookie, will start. Blow, the rookie, will start. Minnesota, Adam Thielen is doubtful. And Dalvin Cook is expected to play. He took that um, shot to his shoulder on during the Monday night game. Miami, no injuries reported. Jets, Le'Veon Bell had an illness. He has been ruled out. Tight end Griffin has, also has an illness. And wide receiver uh, Damaris Thomas, hamstring, both are questionable. Keep an eye uh, on both of those. Colts, wide receiver T.Y. Hilton's ruled out. But running back um, Marlon Mack is back and expected to play without any limitations. Paris Campbell, wide receiver, will also play. Tampa Bay, no notable um, injuries. Chargers, no notable injuries. Jacksonville, no notable injuries. Kansas City, running back. Running back Damian Williams is ruled out. New England, wide receiver um, Muhammad Sanu and Julian Edelman are questionable but expected to play. Pittsburgh, running back uh, James Conner and Juju Smith-Schuster are ruled out. Arizona, no notable injuries. Tennessee, wide receiver Adam Ham Humphreys is ruled out. And wide receiver uh, Tajay Sharp is questionable. Oakland, wide receiver uh, Renfro has been ruled out. Running back Josh Jacobs is questionable. Um, DeAndre Washington and uh, Jalen Richards would be his replacement. He's been playing with a fractured shoulder, and um, he's questionable right now. I wouldn't be surprised if he sat tomorrow, but they are in a playoff hunt. It's just a matter of do you think you can get it done without him and save him for the playoffs. Now let's take a quick look at each game and, and just identify some fantasy-relevant numbers and the um, game totals. Kansas City is at New England. New England is a three-point uh, home favorite. Game totals highest on the uh, main slate, 49 points. I like all the pieces in this uh, game. I like to stack it in multiple ways. The only problem is a lot of them are uh, really expensive. Mahomes is second highest uh, quarterback at 7,000. Um, but I will get some exposure to this game. The passing game, really interested in that. The path um, to victory on paper for New England is obviously the running game because Kansas City um, is the worst versus the running back position. Uh, I believe they have a number 32 DVP versus the running back. But I believe that um, New England is actually going to come out and throw the ball. And uh, last year, this game um, had a really high, they played two times, uh, had high scoring in both games. Uh, and the game in New England was actually higher scoring than the one in Kansas City. So I, I definitely want some exposure to this game. And watch out for the, as I just mentioned, the New England um, wide receivers, Sanu and Edelman. They're expected to play, but just keep an eye out on that. Um, Indianapolis at Tampa Bay is next. Tampa Bay is a three-point home favorite. Game total is 47.5. I really like this game. Stack. There's lots of pieces that you can stack. I like the passing game. I like Jameis Winston with either Godwin or Evans. It's kind of hard to get both of them in your uh, lineup without sacrificing big time in other areas. Um, Godwin actually has the better matchup on paper, um, but they're both uh, viable. It's just a matter of which one is it going to be this week. Indianapolis, Marlon, Max do back, but Tampa Bay has been pretty stingy versus the run. 
So I could see Brissett uh, trying to get it going in the passing game with Zach Pasco, Marcus Johnson, and uh, Jack Doyle. Uh, with uh, Ebron being ruled out. Doyle got 11 targets last week. Carolina's at Atlanta. Atlanta's a three-point favorite, 47-point game total. Obviously, Christian McCaffrey is the big name, the most expensive, $10,300, $200 savings this week. Um, I, I like to stack this. And there's lots of pieces, lots of ways to do this. I don't really like um, using McCaffrey with Allen and DJ Moore um, because if McCaffrey's vulturing the touchdowns in these, you know, he's over 53% of the offense. Anyhow, if he's doing all that, I mean, they have had games where they both scored, but I just don't see that there's enough meat on the bone for that to happen. I do like Atlanta. Julio Jones uh, matchup with Bradbury is not um, ideal, but you have Ridley. Hooper's back. And also have interest in uh, Devontae Freeman. Carolina's been getting gashed by the running back position. So I'm going to be stacking this game lots of ways, and I, I want exposure to it. Tennessee at Oakland. Oakland's a three-point home favorite. Game total's 46.5 points. Josh Jacobs, as I just mentioned, playing with a fractured shoulder. Um, but Derrick Henry for Tennessee has been tearing it up in the running game. I think this is a game that's going to involve um, a lot more passing than what people think. Um, if Jacobs is out, they um, Oakland uses DeAndre Washington, but they like to use Richard out of the backfield, throwing the ball to him. And Renfro's out, so that's gonna um, those targets are gonna have to go somewhere. That might give Darren Waller more targets, and you have Tyrell Williams on the outside as well. Miami at the Jets. The Jets are a five-point home favorite. Game total is 45. Le'Veon Bell's ruled out. That makes Bilal Powell and Tyrone Ty Montgomery. Viable. I was expecting to throw the ball to Montgomery out of the backfield more. Uh, Miami put up some points. Um, Fitzpatrick's been last week against Philadelphia. Fitzpatrick's been throwing the ball around. Jets are banged up on defense. Um, could see the Miami passing game getting going again. And this game, I think, is setting up real nice to have um, you know shootout potential. The game total is only 45. Um, with Le'Veon Bell out, I can see them uh, letting Darnold throw the ball around more. That makes um, Robbie Anderson and Jamison Crowder uh, even more uh, interesting. San Fran at New Orleans. New Orleans, a three-point home favorite. Game total is 44. This will probably scare a lot of people away because of the matchups. New Orleans' defense is uh, uh, fairly uh, good as well. I have a little bit of interest in Garoppolo and um, uh, some of the passing and uh, I think New Orleans, I think Michael Thomas is pretty much matchup proof. And he presents problems for San Francisco. They, they're they very good against the pass. They, their defense is is good. It's as advertised. But um, Mike, uh, Michael Thomas, I feel like he's matchup proof. And he's going to get targeted a lot. I think Cooks is going to get targeted a lot. There's lots of thing, ways you can stack this game. San Francisco does have problems with back, uh, running backs coming out of the backfield, catching the ball. So that makes Alvin Kamara interesting as well. It's just, um, you know, which pieces do you want to use? And they're fairly expensive as well. Detroit at Minnesota. Minnesota's a 13-point home favorite. Um, Cook coming off that injury Monday night. They said he's ready to go. Doesn't carry any in injury designation. But I could see if they got up, uh, big enough, their 13-point home favorite. If they got up, I could see them resting him and not letting him take any more unnecessary hits. Detroit is uh, gives up a lot in the running game, so that makes Cook very um, interesting. The game total is only 43 and a half points. It's a rookie quarterback going to Minnesota first road game, um, so I'm not sure how much scoring Detroit's going to be able to get done. Kirk Cousins in a good matchup. Um, Thielen's probably going to be ruled out. He's doubtful right now. Stefan Diggs matched up against Slay. It's not a great matchup, but he um, Cousins has uh, Old Bruce Johnson and um, uh, the tight ends, uh, Irv Smith and Kyle Rudolph, that he can go to. Baltimore at Buffalo. Buffalo is a five-and-a-half point home favorite. Obviously, you have to consider Lamar Jackson He's uh, match, about as matchup proof as you can get. Buffalo, um, the way to move the ball on them is on the ground. Uh, the game total is only 43 and a half points. I, I think Buffalo is going to give up a little resistance. Their defense is as good as advertised, too. And I, I think this game is going to be uh, 
lot more um, competitive than maybe some people think. Um, in Buffalo, um, playoff atmosphere, both these teams are headed to the playoffs. It looks like Buffalo still has an outside chance at the AFC East. Um, so uh, definitely I'm not really interested in stacking much this game. I have a lot of interest in Lamar Jackson and the defenses. Um, and um, that's about it for that game. Chargers are at Jacksonville. Chargers are a three-point road favorite. Game total is 43. Um, Melvin Gordon, Jacksonville, has been giving it up on the ground a little bit. They got gashed a few weeks ago. Derrick Henry, this sets up real nice for um, um, Melvin Gordon. It also sets up for Leonard Fournette. I mean, he's getting an unbelievable amount of uh, carries, and they're targeting this year. Uh, the backfield, he's had uh, nine re receptions in two games in a row. It's a low game total, um, but I'm really interested in the running backs in this game. Also a little bit of interest in Hunter Henry. Uh, that's one of the um, weaknesses of the Jacksonville defense is the uh, tight end position. And um, just have to kind of like temper your expectations a little bit. They, they're, they're projecting it to be a closer game with only a three-point spread. But the game totals uh, fairly low, which would make you probably think that the, uh, this game is going to involve a lot of running and uh, it's maybe a slower paced game. Pittsburgh at Arizona, and we all know that the Chargers Rivers offenses are usually um, very slow. Pittsburgh at Arizona. Pittsburgh's a two and a half point road favorite. Um, game total is 43. Pittsburgh coming in. Well, this is two rookie quarterbacks. Um, this is Pittsburgh. I believe this is Hodge's first um, road start in Arizona. Um, James Conner, Juju Smith-Schuster's ruled out. Um, so they're pretty beat up. I, Benny Snell is my well. Arizona's pretty good against the run. Um, the Pittsburgh's defense is real stingy. I don't have a lot of interest in this game uh, as far as from a fantasy perspective. I do have a little bit of interest in the Arizona defense, though, versus a rookie quarterback on the road, and they're 2,400, so I will have some shares of them. Washington's at Green Bay. Green Bay's a 12-point favorite. Game total's 42. Uh, another rookie quarterback in Green Bay. Um, this sets up real nice, real nice matchup for Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams. Also, the running game, Aaron Jones, it's just a matter of uh, what they want to do. There's all kinds of pieces, but how much are they going to have to do if Washington doesn't push back and, and make it a game? If they don't do any scoring, then you can see the Green Bay running game just um, dominating this whole game and, um, and have an interest in the Green Bay's defense as well. Dwayne, uh, Dwayne Haskins has been known to turn the ball over. Denver's at Houston. Houston's an 8.5-point home favorite. 41 and a half point game total, low game total, another rookie on the road. Um, have some interest in Will Fuller he's, if he's playing. He actually has the best matchup on paper um, versus, I believe his name's Will Parks. He is um, has a, gives up a quarterback rating of 148, which is the worst on the main slate. Um, Hopkins is going to be busy with Harris, and I could see um, Watson going to Fuller a lot if he's playing. He's got a questionable tag. I don't know if that's just playing possum, but um, I will have uh, probably be higher on the field when uh, Will Fuller tomorrow in that game. Don't have much interest in the Denver um, offense. Look, maybe a little bit of uh, Philip Lindsay. That seems to be the, uh, a, a way to attack Houston. James White just had a really big game against them uh, last week and or the week before. For uh, New England. So that's about it for that game. And last, the Cincinnati at Cleveland. Cleveland's an eight and a half point home favorite. Game total is 40 and a half points. Um, I like Cleveland's. Uh, Najoku's back at tight end. I really like him. I have some exposure to him. I think a lot of people are probably going to have a higher ownership on Nick Chubb, which wor for me worries me because Kareem Hunt has been getting all the passes on the backfield. And that, that's, I don't like running back committees. Um, Cincinnati coming off their first uh, win. Um, Tyler Eifert and Tyler Boyd are um, interesting this week. Cleveland um, pretty stingy versus the run. Probably going to force Cincinnati to the air. And I, I think Mayfield's going to put the ball in the air as well. I have a lot of interest in Odell Beckham Jr. tomorrow as well. So that wraps up all the games. 
And now I want to share with you guys um, the uh, lineup that I've been working on and using. Now, I use only the players from the player pool that I've uh, went over with you guys. You can go back and look at my videos from this past week and see um, where, where I was at as far as what players I'm targeting. And I just read them all to you as well. But this is a lineup that I'm building manually. Then I'll talk to you about an optimized lineup. Now, the way I do my lineups, I don't MME um, do the 150 lineups in one. If I could, I would. I'm just not in the position to do that. So I play some different um, lineups. This, I had a really good week last week, so I'm going to be playing more. Play head-to-head, 50-50, -head, um, some large GPPs in contests like that. And I um, build some different lineups using the player pool. And um, that's how I, I enter my contest. So this is the lineup that I'm working on um, myself. At quarterback, James Winston. I like Winston pretty much every week. This guy is, I mean, he does turn the ball over, but he still gets there. I mean, he's, if, if you look, he's, he's still, um, see his game log. I mean, I know he's got a fumble, two interceptions, four interceptions, but his fantasy point last week was one of his worst weeks. But before that, 29.32 points, 21.82 points, 23.32 points. He still gets it done turning the ball over, and he very rarely has a dud game. Um, that game right there, he had four touchdowns and only one interception. But I know he turns the ball over, but I have a lot of interest in him. And he makes my my lineup work with what I'm uh, the way I'm building it. And I know they're going to put the ball in the air against Indianapolis. I don't. Last week Peyton Barber stole a couple of touchdowns. I don't see that happening this week. Next, I'm going to have Christian McCaffrey. I think his ownership is down this week because of uh, what happened last week, and I think that's really dangerous with this guy. Um, his price went down a little bit, and I think some recency bias is going to. Well, he's only at 11% projected ownership from the site that I use. I got to get 30 fantasy points out of him to get value. Um, but I learned my lesson about midseason not to totally fade him. I want him in there. I want the running back that's going to give me a safe floor, and, I, and I'm going to spend up. If I'm going to spend up, it's going to be uh, on a running back that gets a lot of volume, and that's Christian McCaffrey. My next running back is... James White. Now, I generally don't like to target the running backs that are part of um, a committee. White's coming off of... Uh, I was just talking about this a second ago when I was talking about Houston. I'm going to see which game that was. Yeah, it was against the Houston game. Coming off a 37 fantasy point uh, game against Houston. He, he had um, 11 receptions or 8 receptions for 98 yards. And 14 rushes for 79 yards. He got into the end zone. I like him at 5,500. The way to beat Kansas City is on the ground. They give up a lot to the running back position with the 32 DVP. I know it's risky with Sony Michelle. I just feel like White at 5,500, and he makes this lineup for me work. I want some exposure to that game, and I'm going to... Um, from the New England side, I'm going to be using um, James White in this particular lineup. Next up, wide receiver, I'm going to use uh, Jamison Crowder. Really good matchup. And I like him even more now that I know Le'Veon Bell's out. Um, so he's only 5,300. Didn't have a great week last week. But before that, in the games leading up to that, he was getting targeted a lot by Darnold. And I think Darnold will go right back to him this week, and his ownership um, won't be as high due to um, uh, what it what happened last week. Next is Chris Godwin. This is my stack piece to Jameis Winston. He actually has the better matchup for uh, the wide receivers between him and Evans, but you never know which one's it's going to be. Uh, I'm going to go with Godwin, and um, his ownership is uh, lower than Evans this week. So um, that's my piece with Winston. I, I believe they're going to move the ball through the air against Indianapolis. I don't think any actually has anybody that matches up really well 
with either one of these receivers. As I said, Winston puts the ball in the air at least 40 times a game. So that's my stack piece with uh, with Winston. My next piece is a uh, piece from the Indianapolis game. And this is uh, Marcus Johnson. He's going to... Last week, let's see here. I'm going to make sure I say this right. They had six targets for 55 yards this uh, last week. T.Y. Hilton's ruled out. He has a really good matchup. Tampa Bay gives up a lot of fantasy points to the wide receiver position. If they're putting the ball in the air and putting some points on the board, and he's not probably going to be able to keep pace with uh, Marlon Mack because Tampa Bay is pretty stingy versus the run game. So I can see this guy getting targeted a lot. He's um, affordable at 3,600. Doesn't take much to get value there and allows me to do some other things with my lineup. Next tight end is another piece to the same game. And Jack Doyle from um, Indianapolis. He's 4,600. I, I just want pieces of, of this game. It's the um, second highest total on the board. So now I have Winston and Godwin bringing it back with Johnson and Doyle. And I really like that. Doyle got 11 targets last week. Hilton's, as I mentioned, Hilton's out again. He runs out for the season. Um, so I got a lot of exposure to that game. Um, and it makes the rest of my lineup work as well. My flex position, I'm going to, um, I want exposure to this game as well. Um, I mentioned that with James White, and I'm going to get it through um, Sammy Watkins. He hasn't had um, a big game. He's only had two uh, decent games this year. But um, Tyreek Hill getting Gilmore might open things up for Watkins. He's only 4,600. Doesn't take much to get value, especially if this game shoots out. And... Uh, that gives me some some more exposure to that game, the highest total on the board. Defense to special teams, I really like the Cardinals. They're going to be lower owned. A lot of ownership is going to go to Pittsburgh. I'm going to go against the other rookie quarterback. And perhaps not too contrarian. I spent all my um, salary, but I really like the um, stacking up that uh, Tampa Bay Indianapolis game with Winston Godwin, Johnson, and Doyle and getting some pieces to the New England game through James White and Sammy Watkins. So there's that lineup. Now, as I always do, I use an optimizer. And what I do is I take all the players in the player pool um, from my lineups, um, from the videos that you've watched this week. I take all those players and I put them in an optimizer from a paid site that I use. I set the minimum, maximum exposures. I do set up um, some rules like, um, say, for instance, if Mahomes is in my lineup, I want one of either Travis Kelsey or Tyreek Hill if, um, or Sammy Watkins. Um, and I'm just giving you um, examples. Or let's say if um, Jameis Winston is in at quarterback, I want one of Chris Godwin or Mike Evans. And then I might have something that says if Jameis Winston's in in my quarterback position, I want to bring it back with at least one of Jack Doyle, Zach Pascal, or Marcus Johnson, something like that. And then I go through each game like that, and I set up the minimum, maximum exposures. I I rarely have anybody. This week I did allow um, for exposure of up to 35% on um, Christian McCaffrey. And um, then I just let let it go. I set it for 150. Sometimes they give me 150 and that tells me either maybe I hit 150 on the dot, which I doubt, or maybe there's 400 um, possibilities. Um, most weeks, though, it comes up short with the um, rules and stuff that I set up and at minimum exposures is only, I set it for three, at least three unique players as well. Uh, on the lineup this week, it was able to generate 139 lineups using 
of the players. Now, two weeks in a row, uh, my player pool has had the players that you could build lineups that would outscore the actual winner of the Millie Maker, um, which is my measuring stick from DraftKings that I use every week to um, compare. It's a $20 entry for your shot at a million dollars. I don't care how many lineups you put in there. I feel like I got just as good a chance as you do. I believe in my process and I believe one day I'm going to win one. So, um, but, um, once, once I run my, uh, what I was talking about was the, the lineups that are generated. Those now, as I mentioned, the two weeks that I had, um, the players in the player pool, those lineups were also generated in the optimizer. I didn't have them, obviously. My smile would be a lot different than it is now uh, with a million dollars. But um, that just tells you my process of using Optimizer. And my main reason for using Optimizer is I want to see the different randomizations of the players that um, I have in my player pool. and Because uh, there's no way I'm going to generate those randomizations myself uh, building manually. And I do enter, maybe I'll max enter the quarter for the 20 lineups that allows, or the dollar the 20 lineups that allows, um, you know, some contests like that. And I play the larger GPP. I might put five in here, a couple in the head-to-head, -head, some in the double-ups, and, um, and I just do my lineups like that. So without further ado, I'm going to show you a lineup that was generated from the optimizer. Patrick Mahomes at quarterback. Leonard Fournette at running back. Bilal Powell, which I just added, at running back, who's going to be the lead back for um, the Jets tomorrow. Could be risky. Mohamed Sanu from... Um, New England, he's due back. He's been practicing. So we have Muhammad Sanu. Where is he? Sanu. Sorry about that, guys. Still got a questionable tag, so you want to make sure you check that. Um, Sammy Watkins, he was 4,600. Will Fuller was 5,500. And we have tight end Njoku from uh, Cleveland. I have a lot of interest in him. 3,500. Here we go. And David Njoku. Flex was Christian McCaffrey. Defensive special teams was the Cardinals. 24. And those are all players from my player pool. And I believe yeah, this one was 49,600. That was the very first lineup that was generated. You got Mahomes with Watkins, bringing it back with Sanu, uh, Fournette and McCaffrey. I really like that. Um, so that's one of the generated uh, lineups. So I'm going to give you guys one more before I go. And we have... This one had Lamar Jackson, Leonard Fournette, Christian McCaffrey. Oh, that's interesting. Odell Beckham Jr. at 6,300. Beckham Jr. is cheaper than Landry. Now, Landry's been getting a lot more targets and um, obviously having better games. This guy's still capable of busting a slate. Well, Marcus Johnson at 3600 for Indianapolis gives you some exposure to the um, Tampa Bay Indy game. Uh, Sammy Watkins, 4600 Janu Smith, I believe he was 2800 Let's see here, 28 for New Smith. There he is. No, he's 3,100. I'm sorry. Flex was Bilal Powell. 
He's showing up a lot since I put him in the player pool. He wasn't above 25%, though, because I that's why I capped it at. There is he, 3,500. And defense special teams was the Texans. So there you go. That's pretty interesting. Running Lamar Jackson naked with um, Fournette and McCaffrey. That's pretty good. If, um, I, I like this. I'll definitely be playing this. This was generated by the optimizer as well. Only left 100 on the table. So that's a really interesting. Usually with my quarterbacks too, I set up a rule. They have to have a target or a uh, you know a wide receiver or a tight end. But Lamar Jackson, I he's the one quarterback I will run out there without a target. So he's he's a running back and quarterback combined, and McCaffrey is a running back and a wide receiver combined. So actually, in those two players, I feel like I got four players. So, um, and I had McCaffrey's ownership in the optimizer set at uh, I believe it was thirty percent, so thirty five percent. So there you go. That's what um, the optimizer did. Now the whole point of me showing you these lineups isn't to give you a lineup to run out there and put in a. A contest if you do it that's fine if you um end up winning and i'm in the same contest you see the cowboy fan 215 up here if it's not blocked out um that's me if you win we split i'd rather have something than nothing but this is going to wrap up our preparation for week 14 i hope this information helps you guys put together some winning lineups and i really look forward to hearing that uh on monday um, I will be back tomorrow to do a um, Sunday night showdown video for Seattle and the Rams. I want to thank you guys for joining me and hanging in there with me. I encourage you to please drop any opinions or comments that you may have below. Please share this video, like, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and hit that notification bell. It really helps me out a lot. My subscribers are turning upwards. Um, and I'm hoping I'm getting a lot of views. So I'm hoping those viewers turned into subscribers. Um, as I said, I'll be back tomorrow to do the showdown for the Rams Seattle games Sunday night. You can also follow me on Twitter at winning about, don't forget the injury reports, um, 1130 for the one o'clock games and, um, 245 to three o'clock for the four and 420 games. And, um, keep an eye on, uh, especially if Will Fuller, he's, uh, one of the big ones out there that I'm kind of, uh, leery of with the questionable tag and Le'Veon Bell's already been ruled out. Thanks again, you guys, for joining me. Good luck to you, um, and I hope to hear about some winning on Monday. My name is Ty Patton. This is all about winning daily fantasy sports. Have a good evening.